This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Tomorrow, Mitz Hashem is Shavasar Batamos, so we have some uh, outstanding information and in Yonim regarding Shavasar Batamos. The, the Mishnah says in Masech Tainas, beginning on Daf Chavav Amar Aleph, continuing on to Chavav Amar Beis, Chamisha Dvarim, Eru Es Avesenu, Veshiva Asar Batamos, Vechamisha Batishva. Five tragedies happened to our forefathers on. Shiva Asr Batamos, and five tragedies happened on Tisha B'av. What are the five tragedies that happened on Shiva Asr Batamos? The Shiva Asr Batamos, Neshtabr HaLuchais. Number one, the Luchais were broken. Moshe Abenu comes down from Har Sinai. He sees Kla Yisrael serving the Egal. He takes the Luchais. He smashes them to smithereens. That is the first tragedy that happened on Shiva Asr Batamos. Number two, Batel HaTamid. Batel HaTamid... The Karban Talmud stopped being brought. Second tragedy. Now this is a very important date, the Batal HaTalmud. If anyone ever opened up Sefer Daniel, the predictions as to when Mashiach is going to come are all based on count from when Batal HaTalmud, this amount of years, 1350, 2300, but it's all from Batal HaTalmud. Now when was Batal HaTalmud? The Yushalmi brings down a machloikis. When was Batal HaTamid? Rib Shimon says Batal HaTamid in the times of the Greek occupation during Bayez Sheni. Reb Levi says in the time of the Roman destruction of the Beis Amikdash at the end of Bayez Sheni. The Rambam in Hilchas Tainis, Parakei Halacha Beis, says Bayez Rishain. So you have three opinions as to when was Batal HaTamid. Okay. Then... Vahufka Ha'ir, the walls of the city of Yushalayim were breached when on the 17th day of Tammuz. Which base Hamikdash? Shani. Bayashani. By the Bayas Rishon, the walls were not breached on the 17th day of Tammuz. When were the walls breached? The 9th. The 9th of Tammuz, according to the Bavli, according to the Shami, they were also breached on the 17th. Okay. Saraf Apostomus is Hatayra. Apostomus burnt the Torah. Who's Apostomus? He's the Greek general. He burnt the Torah in times of the second Beis HaMikdash. And then finally, the Hamid Tselem, the Hechal, he put up an idol in the Beis HaMikdash. So if you think about these five tragedies, you'll notice that it seems like these are five completely disparate events, five, five tragedies that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I mean, think about it. When were the Luchas broken? In the Midbar, right? When Kali was in the desert. When did the Talmud stop? Either during the Greek occupation, Roman occupation, according to the Raman, by Yisrishayim. When were the walls of the city breached? Chorban by Yisheni. When did Apostamus burn the Tyra? Hundreds of years before the Chorban by Yisheni. So these are five tragedies that seemingly have nothing to do with each other. The breaking of the Luchais has nothing to do with the carbon Talmud being br- stopped. The, car, the Talmud being stopped has nothing to do with the walls of the city being breached. Apostomus Thomas burning the Tyra. I mean, these are five isolated events. They're independent of each other. They have nothing to do with each other. And almost coincidentally, they all took place on the same day on Shiva Asa Thomas. So what we'd like to do is, is there any common thread? Is there any common thread between all these five tragedies, especially according to the Rambam? The Rambam says, Batal HaTamid is when? Bayis Rishain. Hufka Ha'ir? Bayis Sheni. Saraf Abbasemus is HaToyra? During the time of the second base of Megish. The tragedies are out of order. Well, you know, the tragedies are listed out of order. The Luchas were broken in the Midbar. The Tamid, according to the Rambam, okay, according to the Rambam, this part works out. The Tamid was Bayis Rishain, Huf Ka'ir was Bayis Sheni. According to the Yushalmi, that Batal HaTamid was the time of Roman occupation. And then Hufka year is when they broke through the walls. Apos Thomas bringing the Torah is during the Greeks, completely out of order. Why would the Mishnah list these tragedies out of order? And is there any common thread between these five tragedies that happened on Shiva Asr Batamas? Rabbi said there's another very important event that happened on Shiva Asr Batamas. And that is what we read about in Pashas Kisisa. What precipitated Moshe breaking the Luchas. What caused Moshe to break the Luchas? Chet When did the Chet Ha'egel happen? Well, if Moshe broke the Luchas on the 17th day of Tammuz, so then they made the Egel on that day. 
They made the ego on that day. So it means the ego was created on the 17th day of Tammuz. And in fact, we just read on Shabbos. Take a look at number two. Bayar Bilam, Bilam saw, Kitoi Veine Hashem Levarches Yisrael, that it was good in the eyes of Hashem to bless Klai Yisrael. And he realized he's not getting anywhere with these Klolers. He did not go like he did in the past toward the snakes. Bayoshes El Amidbar, Panov Bilam faces the Midbar. The question is, what does that mean, he faces the Midbar? Of course he's facing the Midbar. He's cursing Klal Yisrael. Klal Yisrael's in the Midbar. Why would the Torah have to say he's facing the Midbar? Where do you want him to face? You know, Mizrach? Well, where do you want Mizra- Bilam to face exactly? It says Targum, Unklus. Look at Targum. V'chazah Bilam, arei sakin kadam Hashem levaracha yas Yisrael. Bilam so it was proper in the eyes of God to bless Klal Yisrael. V'loi halach kizman bizman elohein la kadamus nechashaya. He did not go as he did in the past toward the snakes. Bishavi la kavel egla. He decided to face the egel. Da avadu Yisrael b'madra. That Klal Yisrael created in the midbar. So when the pasuk says Bilam faced the midbar, it doesn't mean he faced the desert. It means he faced the egel, which was made in the desert. So in other words, you know, Bilam, he's trying to curse Klal Yisrael. He needs a vantage point. He needs to focus on our weak point, on our Achilles heel, right? The, uh, uh, the weak underbelly of Klal Yisrael. What's the Achilles heel of Klal Yisrael? The Egal. So Bilam, he wants to curse Klal Yisrael. What does he focus on? The Egal. Now, why is Bilam specifically focusing on the Egal? Why did Bilam feel that by focusing on the Egal, he would be effective in cursing Klal Yisrael? We have a very mysterious Pasuk in Tehillim. In Parakuvav, Pasuk Chaf. Pasuk says like this. Vayamiru es kvaidam. They exchanged their honor. Besavnis shar. With the image of an ox. Oichel esav. That ate grass. They exchanged their honor. Who's our honor? God. We exchange God. Betavnis shar. In the image of an ox. Oichel esav. That eats grass. Question is. Who cares what the, what the cow eats? We need to know what the cow eats, right? Rabbi, so what is this Pasuk talking about? What does it mean we exchanged our honor in the image of an ox that eats grass? What, which chet is this talking about? It's talking about the chet We exchanged Yibanesh some for an ego. But why does the Pasuk say what the ox ate? Let's say the ox ate kishka. Then it would have been a different avera. Let's say this ox ate danishes from the kaila. Then it would have been a different avera. I mean, why do we need to know that it was vayamiru es kevaydam besav nishar oichel esav? I mean, these two words are completely out of, order, out of place. It's not unnecessary. It should just say, by Amiru's Kvaidam, they exchanged Hashem, Besav Neshar, in the image of an ox. Why shouldn't it Who? be Besav Okay, it's also referred to as a Shar, Alei Shor. But who cares what it ate? You know, we need to know the nutritional diet of this ox. It doesn't mm-hmm. nagel drink milk instead of... Okay, it, it could also eat grass, but who cares what it eats? Why is it important? Why is the Avera affected by what this cow ate? So I said, the first thing we need to know is who made the Ega? Who made the Ega? Aaron. Micha. Micha. The Erev Rav. Who are the leaders of the Erev Rav? So be surprised to learn. The Arizal writes in the Shah HaGogulam, that the ego was made by two gentlemen by the names of Yunus and Yumbrus. Yunus and Ye, you ever hear that? You ever meet these guys? <laughs> Yunus and Yumbrus. Who are these guys? They had the distinction of being the sons of Bilam Harasha. Where do their names appear? As far as I know, they only appear one time in Chumash. They don't appear in the Chumash, they appear in a Targum. You look in the Targum Yunus and Ben Uziel. That Bilam took Ashnei Ne'arav Imai, his two lads. Who were his two, two lads? Targum Yonas and Ben Uziel says, Yonas v'yombras. These guys, Moshe Rabbeinu took out of Mitzrayim. They were part of the Erev Rav. They were the ones who made the Egal. So you can imagine, Bilam, why he's focusing on the Egal. I mean, the Egal is Bilam's nachas. You know, these guys, these kids, they're a chip off the old block, right? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Bilam's looking into the Midbar. He sees the nachas of his two wicked children, look what they did to Kal Yisrael. They were responsible for one of the greatest sins Kal Yisrael ever committed. So Bilam, what? 
Three thousand uh, uh, Yidin were killed because of the Egal. Yeah. Should, should they have been part of the three thousand? Perhaps they were. We don't know. It, uh, had they escaped? I don't know. Beats me. But they, they made it out. They survived. And uh, they're accompanying Bilam with his donkey. Anyway, so what we're learning is Bilam's two sons, according to the Ariza, were the ones who made the Egal. So Rabbi Isai, it's Mamish, half of a fella. Rabbi Chaim Vital writes, that in the Pasuk, Vayamiru es kavaydam, besavnes shar, oichel esev, says Reb Chaim Vital, the word esev is not a description of what these cows ate. The word esev is a rashi teva, is to tell us the date that the Avera happened. You know what esev stands for? Shiva, Asar, Betamaz. That's the date of the Chedo Ego. When it says, Vayamiru es kavaydam, they exchange their honor. Betavnes shar, in the image of an ox, oichel esev, that ate grass, we don't care what the ox ate. Asev is a remez. Asev stands for Shiva Asar Betamaz. We find another amazing remez. There's a pasuk in Shir Hashirim that says, "Ad shehamelech b'msibai nirdi nasan rechai." You know that pasuk? No. Parak Aleph pasuk your base. Ad shehamelech b'msibai. While the king was still at the party, nirdi nasan rechai, we gave off a foul odor. We stunk. What's this talking about? So the Gemara says in Gitin Lamed Vav Amid Beis Aluva Kala Shazinsa Bekarv Chupasa. The the most disgraceful thing you can have in this world is if you have a bride who commits adultery under the chuppah. Right? A woman has an, uh, uh, commits adultery. It's a terrible thing. She's uh, she's unfaithful to her husband. That's a halbatzar. Imagine a woman. She's standing under the chuppah and she's mezana under the chuppah. Says Umar, did that ever happen? So, yeah, sure, we did it. That's what we did. We're standing at Har Sinai. The mountain is suspended over our heads. That's the chuppah. And while the mountain is suspended over our heads, we make the egel. The egel is, we were marrying Hashem. We were marrying the Rabban Shalom. And instead, we go and we, we serve the egel. We're still standing on the chuppah. You should be happy. Don't complain the next time the chuppah takes long. You know, that chuppah was, uh, was uh, 40 days, right? We're still under the chuppah. We're still waiting for the chassim to give us the, the ring, the kesef, right? The luchas for the kesef. You know, sometimes you have uh, the chassim, he can't pull out the diamond, the ring. So we're still waiting to get the luchas. Says the Gemara, Aluva kala shezinsa tachas chupasa. That's what the Pasuk means. Ad shehamelech b'mesibai. While the king is still at the party, near di nosan reichai, we gave off a foul order. Says the Roy Keach, one of the great Rishonim, the master of the Ramazim of the Torah, he says, take the Rashi Teva Yisav. Ad shehamelech b'mesibai. What are the Rashi Teva Yisav? Ad shehamelech b'mesibai. Ayin, sin, base, spells. Asev. What's Asev? The Pasuk and Tehillim, Vayamiru es kvaydam besav nishar, oichel Asev, Shiva, Asar, betamaz. Wow. So what we're learning is, that not only does the Torah talk about the Chirayel, the Torah is alluding to the date of the year that this happened. By the way, without getting into it, Arizal writes further, that the sons of Bila made the Egel, but who became the Egel? Bilam's father became the Egel. Ba'ar, he was the Egel. And he said the words, Ela Lekecha Yisrael. Okay, I'll let you, you do whatever you want with that one. But that's what the Arizal writes. Coming back to the Gemara and Tainus. So what we're learning is, the Ched Ha'egel is what's set into motion Yedzayin Betamos. His father was dead? His father was the Egel. That's all we're giving you. <laughs> So what set into motion the tragedy of Yudzayin Betamos was the Chet Ho'egel, which caused Moshe Rabbeinu to break the Luchas. When did it happen? Asev. Vayamir was kvayed the Mesav Neshar Oichel Asev. Ad shehamelech b'mesibay near Dina San Rechai. Comes along Rav Yaakov Etlinger. Rav Yaakov Etlinger was the Rebbe of Rav Shamsin Fal Hirsch. Rabbi Yaakov Ellinger wrote on Shas, the Aruch Laner. He also wrote Minchas Oni, 
on Chumash, and he tells us an amazing thing. Says Rabbi Yaakov Atlinger, the five tragedies that happened on Shavas of Tammuz are not five isolated and dependent tragedies. Rather, they are a description of the progression of Jewish demise. In other words, if you see Klal Yisrael veers off the path, you see movements that are stri- causing Klal Yisrael to stray away from Hashem. What's the progression? How does it start? You see Nebuch. You see a Yid, now he's wearing a cross around his neck. Where did that come from? How, what's the progression? Is it, did it happen overnight? Did it happen suddenly? Or is there a Hadrug? Is there step by step? Says the uh, Aruch Laner, says the Min Chasani, the five tragedies of Yudzayim Batamas are marking for us the five steps in Jewish decline. We'll say it out so then we'll read it. Number one, Nishtabru Haluchais, the Torah is broken. What does that mean? You have a guy, he learns Torah every day, he has a set time to learn, he has a set year, and then he slackens off a little bit, whatever, it's the summertime, time to relax, I need to eat breakfast a little bit longer, and he gives up some of his limudim. He gives up some of his learning. The learning stops. Nishtabru haluchas, the luchas are broken. That's step one. As soon as a person slackens off in their learning, what's step two? Batel hatamid. The daily avoida stops. First, you know, when you come home from uh, come home late, you say, Marav, all right, I'll daven at home. Mincha, uh, I'll catch it a different time. First the Marav goes, then the Mincha goes, then a Shacharis maybe on a Friday or on a Tuesday. But at least you come Monday and Thursday, and you come Shabbos morning, and of course Shabbos by Mincha. But then even the Monday and Thursdays go, but at least you come on Shabbos. Then Friday night goes, then Shabbos by Mincha goes. But at least you come Shabbos morning. You make sure you're there for the Kiddush. <laughs> and then you walk in laning time. And then we'll see you Yom Naram, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Finally, Ni'ila is your only special guest appearance. Ubatel yes, HaTamid, the Tamid, the daily Avoida stops. What's next? Havka <clears> Ha'ir. <throat> the walls are breached. The walls of defense of the Jew have been broken. So now the Yid, he doesn't have his learning, he doesn't have his Tamid, he doesn't have his davening. He's open to all the influences of the Gayim. His mind, his heart, his eyes are taking in all the outside influences. What's next? Saraf es Torah. The Torah is burnt. Any vestige of Torah in him is completely consumed in fire. He's lost any what we call lachluch es Torah. He's completely bereft of any attachment to Torah. And finally, Hamid Selam Behechal. Instead of the Mugging David hanging around his neck, he has a different simon hanging around his neck. <laughs> but it all starts where? Nishtabra Haluchais. Stopping to learn. That's the beginning of the end. Someone who's strong in their Torah, someone who's strong in their Siddharim, someone who's strong in their Kfilos, this progression doesn't begin with. It all begins Nishtabru Haluchais. Let's take a look at that inside. Right? the Yarach Laner. The Imam no Mamarnu. Even though we may have said, Even though we all know, the main tragedy of Yudzayin Batamas is the breaking of the walls of the city. This is the tsar, this is the tragedy that's mentioned in the Navi. Even other tragedies, that occurred on Yudzayin Batamas, Rubam Hayu Bechorim Bayasheni. The majority of them happened during the times of the second base Amikdash Shatnan in the Sakta Tainis, Paragdalit, Haidvarim Irubi Yudzayim Batamos, Shvir Saluchis, Batal Tamir Hufka Yir, Saraf Abasam Satar, Behemet Sam Behechal, Bechol Ela Harois Hoy Bechorim Bayasheni. These all occurred during the second base Amikdash, Chutzmi Shvir Saluchis. Avaloi Bilvad Amash Ero Lanu Bechorim Bayasheni at Saimos Haino Lanu Lazikarain. We don't just commemorate the tragedies of the second Mesa Mikdash. Says our Chaner, we are commemorating Jewish tragedy in all generations. Specifically, these five tragedies that happened on Yezayin B'Tamas, Mamish Nishad Shubizman Hazer. They happen today, Kiseider Shanimnu B'Mas Nisan, in the exact Order that's listed in the Mishnah. 
This is our trouble today. Levata Amunas Yisrael Meirabim. To, to take away the belief in Hashem today. In other words, Archaner is saying, these five tragedies occur today. History repeats itself. Kiloi b'pam achad, yer yeridu mehar gavay lebar amok. Klal Yisrael does not fall instantaneously. Kiim b'madrega achar madrega. Ki kol zman she'osku Yisrael b'tayra. When a Jew is engaged in learning Taira, rubam kekulam hi haysa ha-meshamram mi-lukash b'averos. For the majority of cases, for most instances, a Jew is protected from sin. A Jew who is involved in learning Gemara, he's safe, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But once you start getting involved in the emptiness of the time, and they become lazy in learning Torah, to the point where the Torah becomes more and more forgotten, and the Luchais are broken. Rabbi Yisai, when Moshe broke the Luchais, what phenomenon did that set into motion? Chazal say that had Moshe not broken the Luchais, there would have been no such thing as Shikhas HaTayra. Right? Chazal say that until the Luchais were broken, there's no such thing as forgetting Tyra. Moshe broke the Luchais, that created the phenomenon of Forgetting, forgetting Torah. So what happens is people slacken off in their learning. They began to forget their Torah. But at least the generations maintain their level to some extent. Many people then stop fulfilling their consistent mitzvahs. Became ha mitzvos lefamim oisa lefamein oisa. Sometimes yes on a Tuesday, sometimes not on a Tuesday. V'chein averos lefamim nishma malav lefamein onishma. And certain averos sometimes they're careful, sometimes they're not careful. And then the Archaner goes on to say that Kohelas has compared the man to a city that's surrounded with walls, and a old king comes to wage war against it. Who's the old king? The Yed Sahara. So after we're mavatal the Tamid, after we stop our daily mitzvahs, the walls of the Jew have been breached, and he is open to the battle of the Yed Sahara. Skip a couple lines. Az neskayim hara shel sreifa satayra. Then it is fulfilled. This tragedy of the Torah burning. Shabaru haboygdim kol atayra. That the sinners burn the whole Torah. Mamish oid mitzah Once you stop your learning and your davening, and the walls are open, it's only a generation until all observance stops. It's only one generation. But that's not enough. The Yitzhar doesn't stop there. Kim Achehevi Gamasara Lahamid Selem Bahekali Yitzhara is not satisfied until. The religion switches. So this is a very frightening description. According to the Archanel, you know, tomorrow when you're you know, saying the different slichas, and you think about, oh, 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, the luchas broke, and the Talmud stopped, and the walls were broken, and you're thinking about a tragedy that has no relation to us happening today in our country. These five tragedies are happening. Nishtabru haluchas, batal ha-tamid, hufka ha-ir, happens every day. This is the tragedy of Yedzayim B'Tamaz. What caused it all into motion? The Chet Ho'egel. Who made the Egel? The sons of Bilam. So what is Bilam trying to arouse? What is he trying to be Ma'ira? The Chet Ho'egel which caused the forgetting of the Torah. Right? So Rabbi said we're beginning the period of the three weeks. Now let's think about it. How long is the three weeks? Three weeks, right? No. No. The three weeks is not three weeks. It's a misnomer. There's no such thing as three weeks. It's three weeks and one day. Right? If it was three weeks, then Shabbat Shabbat would be Tuesday. And, it, and Tisha B'av would be a Monday. Right. So there's no such thing as three weeks. It's called Bain Hametzarim. 22 days. How many hours in the three weeks? Any accountants over here? What's 22 times 24? 
528. Very good. 528. What is the significance of 528? There are 528 prakim in Shas. There are 528 prakim of Mishnah in Shas. It says, V'nei Yisachar. If you count the number of hours in the three weeks, you have 528 hours corresponding to the 528 prakim in Shas. Rabbi Sai. What's the significance of that? Because what caused the tragedy is of the three weeks? The breaking of the Luchais. The breaking of the Luchais caused the Tart to be forgotten. So we have three weeks, 528 hours to remind us what we need to remember. What do we need to remember? Taf, Kof, Chaf, Ches, Prakim, and Shas. That is why if you look in Vayikra Rab, look at number 13. En kol hagoliois halolu miskansois ela bischus. HaMishnah, HaMishnayis. Hashem will bring the Geula and the Zchus of the Mishnayis, the 528 Prakim of Mishnayis. We have 528 hours in the three weeks to remind us of what Bilam was setting into motion. Bilam broke, Bilam constructed the Egel. His sons constructed the Egel. That caused the Luchas to be broken. That caused the Torah to be forgotten. We have three weeks, 500, 528 hours to remind us of what we need to remember. What do we need to remember? Tyra, Tyra. Take a look at the Bnei Yisachar. Bnei Yisachar writes, the keys of Geula. How do you say key in Hebrew? Mafteach. What's the gematria of Mafteach? 528. The keys of Geula. The keys of redemption are the 528 prakim of Shas. Says Bnei Yisachar. Sach kal hashois. The number of hours. Min hachof yamim. From the 22 days of the three weeks, Heim Tav Kof Chav Ches Minyan Mavteach Agula. Our 528, the number Mavteach. Vinei Amru Chazal. Ein Hagoliois Meskansois Ela Beschus HaMishnayis. Chazal say that the Gula will only come in the Schus of the Mishnah. Shenemar, skip the, the brackets, the parentheses. Shenemar Gam Ki Yitnu, if you will learn, Lashon Masnisen, Bagoyim, Ata Akabsim. Akein Yesh. The Mishnayis, Tav Kuf Chav Ches Prakim Minyan Mavteach, the cor- corresponding number of key. How many Prakim in Mishnah? Five twenty-eight. Mavteach is five twenty-eight. The keys of Geula are the five twenty-eight Prakim. I even though the Megala Amukai says there are five hundred twenty-eight Prakim in Mishnah. If you look in the footnotes of Rabbi Shaya Berlin, who's Rabbi Shaya Berlin? Rabbi Shaya Pick. Rabbi Shaya Pick lived from seventeen nineteen. To 1799. Now, if you hear the writes about him, he was a Gavra Rabba, a Jewel, he was a Bucky Bekulu Talmida, the Babi in Yushami. Right, if you look on the side of the Gemara, you have something called the Masaris Hashas, right? Rabbi Shai Berlin wrote additions to the Masaris Hashas. Sometimes you have, under the Masaris Hashas, you have brackets. The brackets of the Masaris Hashas were written by Rabbi Shai Berlin. The original Masar Sashas was written by Rabbi Yosef Shmuel. He, he was nifter in 1704. Chida writes about the author of Masar Sashas that he chazered Shas 42 times to be able to be Mekayim Vidibarta Bum. Bum is 42. Right? He said he didn't want to be a bum, so he chazered it 42 times. Vidibarta Bum. Probably he chazered it more. So Rabbi Shaya Pick added. Haisafais to the Masar Sashas, you look in the brackets underneath the Masar Sashas, that's from Rabbi Pick. Rabbi Shaya Pick says, I counted, I only got 523 prakim. So where did the 528 come from? So Rabbi Neisachar says, there are five prakim in Shas that are not Mishnah, they're Toisefta. The sixth parak of Avais begins, Shanu, Rabbi Seinu, Belashain Ha Mishnah. It's not a real Mishnah, but it was taught in the Lashon of the Mishnah. Also, the fourth parak of Bikurim is a Taisafta. You have in Kedushin Taisafta, you have in Saita, you have in Psachim. So think of it like this. There are 523 Mishnayis, Prakim of Mishnah, five Prakim of Taisafta. How many hours in three weeks? 528. But when was Mashiach born? The Medr says Mashiach is born five hours left to the end of the three weeks. Five hours left to Tishabav. Mashiach was born. So you have 523 Prakim of Mishnah corresponding to the first 523 hours of the three weeks. 
You have five prokim of Tosefta already, that's when the Geula started to come, with five hours left in the day. Says the Bnei Yisachar, the purpose of the three weeks is to remind us what we need to correct to reverse the tragedies of the three weeks. The three weeks were set into motion with the Chedo Egal, the breaking of the Luchas. The breaking of the Luchas caused the Torah to be forgotten. So we remind ourselves, the period of the three weeks, which begins, Merz Hashem, tonight, tomorrow morning, is supposed to remind us what we need to remember. I believe this is the first time we're featuring uh, the next Maramakam on the sheets. It comes from the Sefer Likute Maran. Who hmm. wrote Likute Maran? Rav Nachman mi Breslov. Rav Nachman writes like this. Tammuz is Rashi Tevois, Zichru, Tairas, Moshe. Tammuz is Rashi Tevois. Remember the Torah of Moshe. Why remember the Torah of Moshe? Because what happened to the Torah and Tammuz? Moshe broke the Luchos. What happened? The Torah was forgotten. So Tammuz is a month of Zichru, Tairas, Moshe. Nachman says further. You know what else Tammuz stands for? Zman Matan Tairasenu. What? The Torah wasn't given in Tammuz. You bet it was. Moshe Rabbeinu came down on what day to give us the Torah? To give us the Luchais. Yudzayin Tammuz. So Tammuz stands for Zman Matan Tairasenu. Aye, but what do you mean? Tammuz is the name of a Babylonian god. That's what, they, that's what you thought. But on a deeper level, Tamma stands for Zman Matan Tairoseinu. So you'll ask, but there's a Vav in Tamas. So why would it stand for Zman Matan Tairoseinu? What happened to the missing Vav? The answer is the Luchais. What were the dimensions of the Luchais? Vav, and vav. vav by Vav. Six by six. Sure. Maish Rabbeinu breaks the Luchais. The Luchais are broken. The Vav flies away. We lose the Vav. Taf Mem Zayin. Zichru Tairas Moshe. What was Bilam trying to do? Bilam is looking at the Chedo Egel. The Chedo Egel caused Tyra to be forgotten. Nishtabru Haluchais. Batala Tamid. Hufka Hoyer. Saraf Esa Tyra. Behemid Salam Behechal. That's what Bilam's angle was. So Rabban Shalom gave us three weeks. How many hours? 528. To remind us what we need to remember. That it should be not a time of forgetting the Tyra. It should be a time of. Zichru, Tairas, Moshe. And it's amazing. Aaron HaKoyin was commissioned to be the one who broke the Luchais, to, excuse me, to make the Ega. And he tells Klal Yisrael, Chag Lashem Machar. Tomorrow will be a holiday. A holiday? Tomorrow will be a tragedy. We will be a fast day. What's Aaron saying? Tomorrow will be a, a, a Chag. What did he mean? Says the Chidon, the Nachal Kidumim. That the Navi Zechariah tells us, Kayom HaRashem Tzvakos, Tzayim HaRavi, V'Tzayim HaChamishi, V'Tzayim HaShavi, V'Tzayim HaAsiri, Yiyeh L'Beis Yehuda, L'Sasenu L'Samcha. That one day, the fast of the fourth month, what's the fast of the fourth month? Shabbat Shabbat Hamad. Tzayim HaChamishi, Tisha B'Av. Tzayim HaShavi, Yom Kippur. Tzayim Gedalia. One day will be a Yom Tov. So Aaron HaKoyen is telling Klal Yisrael, Chag you think tomorrow we're going to make the Egel and it's going to be a joyous day for you. That's not what I have in mind. What I have in mind is ultimately it's going to become a fast day because the Luchas are going to be broken because of the Egel. But La Asad Lavoi, Kayama Hashem Tzavakais, Tzayim Haravi, V'tzayim HaChamishi, V'tzayim HaShvi, V'tzayim HaSiri, Yiye Lebeis Yehuda L'Sasen O'Simcha L'Mayadim Toivim. That L'Asad Lavoi, Tzayim Gedada, Shabbat Shabbat Hamas is going to turn into a Yom Tif when we're able to utilize the 528 hours of the three weeks to help us focus on remembering the 528 Prakim and Shas, we're able to create Zman Matan Tairasenu, Zichru Tairas Moshe. So Abba said we would like to suggest something unbelievable. Where in the Torah is there a remez to Shiva Asa Batamos? Vayamiru es kavaydam besav nishar oichel esav. Esav stands for Shiva Asa Batamos. Where else is there a remez? Ad shehamelech b'mesibay rashi tevais esav Shiva Asa But I believe there's another remez. Every year, the Shabbos before Shiva Asa 
we lay in the Haftarah of Parshas Balak, we say the following, It will be the remnant of Yaakov. Who's that? That's us. We're the remnant of Yaakov Avinu. We're the She'iris HaPleta. Bekerev Amim Rabim will be among the many nations. Ketal Meyes Hashem. God will give us His due. What's the due of Hashem? Taira. Kervivim Ale. Kervivim, like the rain. What's the rain? Ein Mayim Ela. Taira. If Riban Shem gives us His Taira, what will be? Ale Esav. It will turn, what's Esav? Shiva Asar Batamos. If we utilize the dew of Hashem, if we utilize the rain of Hashem, it will transform the Esav Shiva Asar Batamos into a day of tragedy. Instead of it being a day of Nishtabru Haluchais, we'll be able to transform it. Lebeis Yehuda, Lasasain, Ola Simcha, Omaya Dem Toivim. But the Pasuk ends with the following Veha Emes, Veha Shalom, Ehavu. Truth and peace will love each other. Just want to conclude with something, uh, a brief message on Parshas Pinchas, this week's Parsha. You know, if Shamshin Fal Hirsch, one of the um, courageous fighters for traditional Judaism, he used to sign his name, Veho Emes, Veha Shalom, Ehavu. That was his signature. Truth and peace will love each other. Why did he sign his name like that? We have in Bereshis, Parshas Bereshis, on the second day of creation, it does not say two words. It doesn't say kitav. It doesn't say it's good. Why not? So the Medrash says, Hashem took the Mayim el He took the Mayim HaTachtoinim, and He split it. So says the Medrash, it was the first Machlaikis in history, it was the first Havdalah. So because it was the first Havdalah, it can't say kitav. Because Machlaikis is never good. It's never good to divide. It's never good to have division. So since it's never good to have division, it cannot say ki toiv on the second day of second day of creation. Okay. And the obvious problem with this medrash is that it also says vayavdel on the first day of creation. Vayar elokim es haar ki toiv. Vayavdel elokim. Ben or ben achoshach. So if you're going to tell me that havdala is bad, division is bad. So why would it say Kitoiv on the first day of creation? It says Vayavdel Elikim Beina Aro Beina Choshech. So you do good of Zala. And the answer is very simple. People are always saying, "Can we always get? Can we get along already? Can we all get along?" Sam Soifer says a very interesting uh, observation. Why is it that it's always from the unobservant that they always want to know why can't we always get along? Why is it the people who are not observant are the ones who want to get along? Says Aksam Soifer, because it's difficult for tzaddikim to make shalom. Because when they're matters of principle, you can't make shalom. You can't make shalom. In fact, Aksam Soifer said the following. Aksam Soifer said, it says, Havei mitamidav shal aroin. Ayhev shalom. Love peace and pursue peace. Some Sefer asks, if, what's the difference between Ayyav Shalom and Roy Dev Shalom? Normally, if you're running after something, it would say, Roy Dev Es HaShalom. Roy Dev Al HaShalom. What does it mean, Roy Dev Shalom? Says the Chsam Sefer, you know what the word Roy Dev means? Roy Dev means to pursue something until you destroy it. Right? What's a Roy Dev? A Roy Dev is someone who's running after someone to kill them. Says the Chassam Sefer, you have to be Ayev Shalom. Sometimes you have to love peace, and sometimes you have to be Roy Dev Shalom. You have to destroy peace. <clears throat> Roy Dev doesn't mean to pursue it. Roy Dev means to obliterate it. So how do you know when to do what? The first thing you know, don't listen to the people who are not Torah leaders. They have no say in when to make peace and when to destroy peace. There is a time to be Ayev Shalom and there's time to be Roy Dev Shalom. Would you say Pinchas? was your classic peacemaker. Pinchas sees an act of um, immodesty, of something very improper. Why can't we all get along? Just, you know, mind your own business. Do kirov. Do kirov. Don't, don't, don't hurt them. Don't scream against them. Be makar of them. Bring them to a seminar. No, Pinchas didn't say that. Pinchas said, he took his sword, he stuck it through the man, he stuck it through the woman, 
effectively ending the Ravera. And everybody wanted to say, Pinchas, who do you think you are? Your grandfather was Yisroi, he was fat in calves for Abu Dazara. Who do you think you are? So the Torah says, no. Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aharon Hakoyen. He's me Talmidov Shal Aharon. Oyev Shalom. Viroy Dev Shalom. This was an instance to be Roy Dev Shalom, to chase away peace. So how do you know when to do what? <coughs> Says Rav Shamsun Fal Hirsch, Veha Emes, Veha Shalom Ehavu. First comes truth, and then comes peace. When there's truth involved, when there are ideals involved, when there's principle involved, first comes truth, and then comes peace. On the second day of creation, Hashem split between the water and the water. What's the difference between one water and another water? A little bit more over here, a little bit less over there, this color, that color, it's all the same. That's a Havdalah that perhaps was not needed. So about that Havdalah, it does not say Kitayv. When there's division for no reason, that's not a good kind of Havdalah. But on the first day of creation, there's Ar and Choshech, light and darkness. You can't mix light and darkness. Don't confuse the the truth. If it's a matter of MS, it's a matter of truth, of principle, you need Havdalah. You need to be Roydev Shalom. That's a situation, says Achsam Sofer, Bakke Shalom, sometimes you seek it out, Birad Feyo, sometimes you chase it away. The second day of creation, you needed to Oyev Shalom. The first day of creation was Veroydev Shalom. That is why we say Pinchas, Ben Elazar, Ben Aaron Akoyen. That is why Rav Shamshin Frala Hirsch always signed his name. Yes, I love peace, but there's something more I love than peace, and that is MS. Veho MS, Veha Shalom Ehavu. Rabbi Sai, when will the fast of the fourth, and the fifth, and the seventh, and the tenth come? Everyone says we need Shalom al Yisrael, yes. But before we have Shalom al Yisrael, you need MS al Yisrael. The idealism, the truths, the principles will not be budged. And when that, when you have true MS, then you can have true shalom. Should be zaycha to the haftacha, the navi, tzayim aravim, tzayim achamish, tzayim ashvi, tzayim asir yilu beis yudo sasan or simchol mayadim toivim veho MS v'ha shalom ehavu rabbi say. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.